Right, last time we looked at this Canon XL1 camera, I managed to kill it. Not quite sure what happened, but uh, I had the cassette mechanism out, which is currently under here, in this uh, half of it. Um, I was making some mechanical adjustments and uh, I just managed to kill the whole thing. So today we're going to have a look at that fault. Uh, I don't know whether we'll be able to repair it yet. Uh, but I have already made some progress in finding out what the issue is. Uh, because it wouldn't power on at all, that means there's obviously a power supply issue, or at least something originating at the power supply. Now most of the um, power supply is done on this board here. This is the main board where everything connects to. Um, most of it's unplugged for troubleshooting. I've got this flat flex cable connected because that connects up to this control switch. Uh, I'll just zoom in on the uh, board so that you can see it. Now this board has quite a lot going on in it. It's where everything connects to the videotape recorder, connects to these connectors down here. Uh, some of the other boards connect to here. The control switches all connect up to here. Uh, the camera connects to here. Um, this is where the power connects to. And this area here, which is normally under a under a metal can, but I've taken it off so that I can access it. This is all the power supply circuitry. And then on the other side of it, uh, underneath there, uh, this is the power supply area. You can see we've got all these inductors. Uh, they all form uh, low-pass filters which uh, provide the power supplies to the uh, rest of it. This, I think, is the main chip that does most of the processing. Uh, under here, under this can, we've got the uh, head amplifier which is where the uh, tape heads connect to uh, but it's uh, this area the power supply area that we're interested in now this cable here is where the uh, supply comes from for the uh, battery and you can see the uh, positive side of the battery then goes off to these three fuses which are labeled rr3201 00 and 02 uh, now there aren't three fuses there there should be three uh, this middle, middle one's still there, but I tested them and these top and bottom ones had blown. Now normally fuses blow for a reason. If a fuse blows it can mean that something else has failed and the fuse blew to protect it. It can also mean that it blew in some sort of nuisance fashion. Unfortunately you never really know, so sometimes what you can do is you can just bypass the fuses like I've done here just by soldering a piece of wire across it uh, and seeing if that helps. Now, it it did and it didn't. Uh, after doing that we now have power to the rest of the um, to the rest of the camera uh, but it was playing up. Uh, it didn't it didn't work as a camera. The LCD just showed random digits. There, there was no activity so there was obviously some other fault and that's probably what caused the fuse to blow. Now first thing you'd do when uh, troubleshooting such a thing is to check the voltages and uh, the power supply voltages and uh, fortunately they provide a lot of test points. Uh, these two here are for the, um, I think for the battery. Uh, there's various test points around here and well, there's, there's test points all over the, all over the board. Uh, but you have to know what they are, and fortunately I do now have access to the uh, Canon service manual for this model. Uh, previously I was using one for a different model, the XL1S, which is different. Uh, some, some of it was similar enough that I was able to use the, the manual, some of it's not the same. Uh, so now we need to come, come down a bit and look at this area, and this is where the voltage regulators are. Now in this power supply section, a lot of these uh, test points allow you to measure the uh, voltages to see if they're what they should be, and they weren't. Most of them were, but one of them is a 3 volt power supply, which powers most of the main chips on it. Um, that was actually measuring about 7.5 volts, which is directly from the battery. So that means that somewhere the 3 volt regulator had somehow failed. Uh, now, of course, I had to use the schematics in the service manual to try and find out how to get to the uh, three volt rail. Turns out the, um, the actual transistor that powers the three volt rail 
is from this area here. And I've taken that off so that I could test it. Uh, and it is indeed faulty. Uh, I've also taken off another one. That's off a different power supply. I've taken that off to test it. I, I know this one works, so I've taken that off to test it to make sure I get a different test result when I test this one. Uh, now these bits here are not uh, actually regulators. These are really just transistors with a built-in diode. I'm not sure what the diode does, but they are just uh, transistors. These uh, integrated circuits here actually do the uh, regulation. They measure the voltage and uh, then power the transistors accordingly. So uh, as far as regulators goes, these are basically just series pass transistors. Uh, so let's just move along to the uh, other part of the bench and we'll test the transistors uh, and I'll show you them working or, or not. I've got the multimeter here. Uh, this is the uh, bad transistor here and this is the good one. I'll just show you the schematic of these little modules. You've got a PNP transistor on pins 1 and 2, the base of the transistor is pin 1, the emitter is pin 2, and the uh, collector is pin 4. The, there's two pins but they're both coupled together. Uh, pin 3 has a diode. Uh, so really what we need to do is test the transistor to make sure it works. Now if we look at the diode model of, of a transistor, uh, a PNP transistor basically has a diode between emitter and base and a diode between collector and base. It's the other way around for an MPN uh, transistor, uh, but this is PNP, so that's what we need to check for. Between the collector and the base, we get 0.6 volts, which is a, a silicon diode drop, which is what you'd expect. If we measure in the other direction, it should be open. But it's not, it's basically a short. There's absolutely no... There's absolutely nothing there, so no voltage there, so... It, it, should, be, it should be open, but it's not, it's shorted. If we test that... If we do that same test on the known good one... From the collector to the base we've got the uh, 0 0.6 volt drop, which you'd expect, but the other way round, it's a bit fiddly to get on these pins. You can see that's just open like you'd expect, so there's obviously a fault of some description on the bad transistor. I'll just try and check the rest of it. There should be uh, a diode between the uh, base and the emitter. Uh, that's open, so that's fine. If we go the other way round, we should get the diode drop. Uh, which we do, so that bit's fine. Uh, and if we just check this diode between pin 3 and pin 4... Uh, we get a drop of just under 0.2, so... Uh, this diode here is probably uh, a shocky diode. Now, a fault like this can be quite problematic. Um, the fault was we ended up with the uh, battery voltage, which is about 7.5 volts on the 3-volt uh, rail. Now, that could kill the chip, or it could kill several chips. Uh, I don't really know. Um, so whilst I can fix the power supply, what I'll do is I'll just get a normal diode and a normal PNP transistor and fit those in as a substitute and hopefully that will fix the power supply problem but I don't know whether that will fix it overall because if the chips or any other components on this board are completely bad because the uh, fault fried them then it's going to be irreparable. Uh, I've replaced the transistor with this uh, 2N, uh, I forgot what it is now, I think it's a 2N3906. Uh, I've just put it on some little wires. Um, it seems like it uh, does actually work. Uh, you get 3.2 volts, the regulator regulates at 3.2 volts, and it just 
just about does power the rest of the camera up. However, the transistor gets very hot uh, and the supply's a bit flaky, so I think it's um, that transistor is too small. Uh, but it does work in, in quotation marks, so I think all we need to do is find a, a PNP transistor that can support uh, a much higher current than that and it'll probably be fine. Uh, I've tested the camera, I've tested the um, lens, I've plugged that in, it seems to work. Uh, we get a, a picture on the uh, screen. Uh, the only thing I can't get to work so far is the um, vacuum fluorescent backlight on the uh, little LCDs, but uh, that's a, not a major concern. Um, so yeah, I, th I think this is sounding quite hopeful now. Another potential way of doing it is to get uh, 3 volts from a bench power supply and hook that up. If I turn that on, you can see the display actually lights up and you, can't, you can just about see on the video the light flashing uh, to indicate some sort of error condition. I know it's uh, flashing to say that there's no tape. So yeah, that, that uh, suggests that at least some of the machine is actually functional, so uh, that's quite positive. So I think what I'll do now is I'll see if I can find some substitute transistor to go to go on that board. Well, I've just plugged in everything except for the camera module, and would you believe it actually works? Yeah, you can even see down the viewfinder we've got um, a blue screen in VTR mode. Right, after. Put some wires onto the uh, circuit board where that transistor was so that I can hook it up to the um, uh, bench power supply which provides just over 3 volts. Uh, I've put the camera module back in uh, and uh, it actually works. If you look down the viewfinder you can actually see that it works. Now there's no lens on but you can see if I move my hand in front of it that it works fine. Uh, now, uh, a while back I did have one problem, there was, um, it's, it worked for a while and then didn't and there was a bad ribbon cable underneath here that didn't seem to be in properly. And then this one here causes some trouble, so if I look at that, if I press around on here you might find the picture goes funny. There you go. Now, I'm not sure if that's a problem with the ribbon cable or if it's a problem with the connector. There we go. There we go, that's better. So it's being a bit of a pain, but it, it shows that the camera does actually work and that uh, the little disaster with the uh, voltage regulator didn't actually kill it. Right, I've got these uh, ZTX751 transistors. Uh, these were the best I could... Uh, the, well, the most suitable ones I could get at, at short notice. Um, it's a PNP transistor, it can support about uh, 2 amps through it and dissipate about 1 watt. Uh, similar power dissipation to the transistor it's replacing, that little surface mount one, although not quite as much current. Uh, the, the little surface mount one that it replaces, that can uh, manage about 3 amps. Although the 3 volt rail on here doesn't seem to take anywhere near 3 amps, in fact it's, it actually takes less than 1 amp. I have measured it, so we should we should be fine. Um, I think this transistor will be okay. Uh, the, the 2N3906, uh, which it replaced, can only do about 200 milliamps, so it's not surprising that that gets hot. Now, of course, we do have the issue with this that it'll um, have to try and fit it somewhere, uh, but I, th I think we'll we'll be okay. I might see if I can get a surface mount transistor to 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 use it. At uh, some point, which will obviously be a lot smaller, but uh, I think this will suffice for now. Right, I fixed the transistor in place on some wires. Uh, let's just plug the battery in. And we can see on there that that 3 volt rail is only drawing about 185 milliamps, uh, which isn't a lot really, but uh, the transistor still gets hot, so there's probably quite uh, enough of a voltage difference. Uh, on the, across the transistor that causes it to dissipate a lot of power. Now if I look into the viewfinder I can see that the camera is working. Uh, I'll just measure the voltages and uh, see what we get. See what we get. Right, the drop between the collector and the emitter is four, just over 4 volts. Uh, now if we try to uh, calculate the power, 
that's uh, 4 volts multiplied by 0 0.15 amps, uh, which is 0.7 watts, 0.72 watts. Uh, so that's actually quite within the uh, specification of that transistor. Oh, yeah, if I, if I touch that, it's, uh, it's just too hot to touch. If I touch my thermocouple probe on the transistor, we're getting up to upwards of 90 degrees. Uh, these other regulators are, are barely warm. Uh, this is Q3207, which is the 3 volt regulator. That's the uh, transistor we've just replaced uh, on the schematic. But one other thing we can do, uh, because this transistor now gets a bit too hot, uh, one bodge repair that we could do is to substitute one of the other transistors. Uh, if you look up and down the schematic, there's those two at the bottom there, and there's uh, several more. There's several more further up, there's one there, and there's uh, another two up here. Um, they all provide different rails, and uh, one of them, um, Q3202, which is uh, this one here, provides uh, a 5 volt rail. So that one there won't... the voltage drop will mean a potential for less power, but we don't know how much current that rail draws. If it draws more current, then it'll draw more power. If it draws less current but has a, a smaller voltage drop, it'll also draw less power. So uh, what we could do is we could uh, transfer... we could uh, substitute uh, that surface mount transistor into the 3 volt rail and put our bodge transistor on the 5 volt rail and try that. This is a better way of doing surface mount soldering. Right, I think this is a much better way of achieving the outcome we wanted. Um, may not be that visible on the screen, but I've uh, changed the, uh, I've moved the surface mount transistor from the five volt rail down to the um, three point two volt rail, uh, and I've put our bodge transistor into the five volt rail. And you can see the um, five volt rail takes uh, one hundred and forty one milliamps. That's um, less current than the 3 volt rail but it also means that the transistor only has about two and a bit volts across it which means it's only dissipating about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a watt so if we touch it, it's, um, it, it is hot but it's nowhere near as hot so I think that might be serviceable for now uh, Right, you can see there in the uh, viewfinder of the camera that it's all working uh, it's flashing lens because the lens isn't plugged in. Um, we've got an image from the CCD. Uh, it won't. It's not much of an image because there's no lens. If I just move my hand around in front of it, uh, you can see that the image does change. Uh, the next problem is the uh, flat flex cable that connects the camera module to the main circuit board. You see, if I fiddle about with it. We keep losing the picture. I think the um, connector's a bit bad. Or oh, it might actually be the uh, ribbon cable itself that's bad. Although it seems fine now. <laughs> yeah, I can give that cable a good prod around now and it seems absolutely fine. You saw it glitch a while earlier, but uh, it seems absolutely fine now. I'm just going to precariously attach the lens. Well, that's a bit fiddly. The lens is quite heavy, so I've got to hold on to it. But you can see in the viewfinder, uh, we do have an image, so the uh, lens also works fine. I can't quite ascertain what these shocky diodes are for in these circuits. Uh, it's connected from the output, with the uh, cathode on the output and the uh, anode on ground. I'm, I'm really at a loss as to what it's used for. I think it'd be some sort of, maybe some sort of uh, short circuit protection, or maybe... May Sorry, maybe some sort of reverse voltage protection, but it doesn't seem that obvious, at least not to me. So, uh, for the time being, I'll leave the shocky diode out of the circuit uh, and just make do with the bodge transistor.
There we go. One prepared transistor. Right, I've just laid that transistor out neatly on the board there, so hopefully that'll do fine. And it should fit under the uh, metal shield nice. Right, it's more or less back together. Uh, you can see from the light that it works. If you look down the viewfinder, uh, we've got a, a picture. It's been on a, a few minutes, it's not died yet, so I don't know how long it'll last. Um, but I think that's the electronic problem fixed, and if it's not, I at least know what the issue is and how to deal with it. So, uh, so I think now I'll move on to the tape issue and uh, get the um, alignment done.